Studios reimagining their properties is nothing new. Long dormant characters are often updated to change with the times, given sexy facelifts, or adopt an edgier, more adult-oriented tone. Cartoon studio Hanna-Barbera is no stranger to this, but what I think makes DC's recent revival of the characters so interesting is that they're subverting boomer nostalgia. They present once beloved characters as social commentary, a satirical look at the culture of 1950s and 60s America. Ostensibly, the post-war boom the United States experienced was a period of prosperity. The country was riding high from victory, suburbia, and the idea of the teenager was born. Advances in technology made life more comfortable and convenient for some, while others fought for basic human and civil rights. No other invention to come out of this time impacted society quite like the television. Information and images can now be beamed directly into people's homes, and producers were looking for as much content as possible to fill the airwaves. Animation had long been a staple of the movie-going experience. Film studios had entire divisions dedicated to producing cartoon shorts to run before their features. It was in what such division at MGM that animators William Hanna and Joseph Barbera first met. Their first collaboration, Puss Gets the Boot, was nominated for an Oscar and served as the blueprint for the Tom and Jerry shorts. This partnership proved so successful that they were put in charge of all the studio's animated output from 1954 until it shut down in 1957, as it was more remarkable to simply rerun their backlog on television. After forming their own studio, it was there Hanna Barbera set their sights. They first explored this new medium by animating product commercials, but soon moved to children's programming. The demand of producing an entire season's worth of animation mixed with a lack of studio backing meant a dip in quality. Budgetary constraints led to limited animation, with the bare minimum being drawn to convey movement. This gave Hanna-Barbera cartoons a look for which today they're derided, but I think they're trailblazing within the medium of television more than makes up for this stilted style. They were innovators experimenting, formatting a structure that would be followed for decades. More than anyone, Hanna-Barbera is responsible for the idea of Saturday morning cartoons, as executives quickly learned that anthropomorphic animals paired well with product placement. Some of their earlier creations, like Huckleberry Hound and Yogi Bear, were immediately successful, but none have remained as prevalent or influential as the Flintstones. For as iconic as the Flintstones is, the concept really isn't that revolutionary. The idea of a modernized prehistoric setting can be seen in Max Fleischer's Stone Age shorts, produced 20 years earlier, all the way down to the rock-based puns. And it's no secret a lot of the humor and dynamics came from the Honeymooners. But again, Hanna-Barbera's ingenuity doesn't lie in the content itself, rather the way it's presented. This was animation specifically for an adult audience, a cartoon sitcom airing in primetime, the first. After decades of the Flintstones being marketed towards children, seeing these characters shilling cigarettes can come as a shock, but this is truer to the original vision than, say, chewable vitamins. The Flintstones have always held the mirror up to society, albeit in a safe and lighthearted way. What satirical edge it had would largely be forgotten in favor of, well, psych eggs and puns. However, in 2016, Hanna-Barbera formed a partnership with DC Comics to revive these characters for modern times. The puns remain, but the comfort and ease of the 1950s suburban lifestyle have been replaced by financial stress and past trauma. Exploitation is a major theme, and capitalism isn't exactly painted in the best light. The use of animals as appliances is portrayed as cruelty, while the convenience of modern Stone Age life is made possible by cheap labor. The Neanderthal is presented as an indigenous culture that was colonized, following a war in which Fred and Barney participated, with parallels to Vietnam. Once a fraternity, the Loyal Order of Water Buffalo has been replaced by the veterans of the Paleolithic Wars, a support group for ex-soldiers suffering from PTSD. Though this sounds heavy, these comics aren't without humor. Creators Stephen Pugh and Mark Russell have done an excellent job of balancing their commentary with comedy. It's kind of strange seeing the Flintstones in these situations, but fitting, as they were used to illustrate the consumerism boom of the 1950s. They are doing the same here, only reflecting the realities of today. Now, the Flintstones were iconic, but my favorite reimagining within the Hanna-Barbera universe involves one of the more obscure creations, Snagglepuss. Snagglepuss first appeared in a slightly different form on an episode of the Quick Draw McGraw show before he was given his own in 1961. The fact that he had a lisp, was pink and into theater led to the assumption Snagglepuss was gay. Working with this, Mark Russell once again subverted 50s culture with 2018's Exit Stage Left, The Snagglepuss Chronicles. This finds the character as a closeted southern playwright caught up in McCarthyism and the blacklisting of entertainers during the Atomic Age. This comic explores the persecution experienced by anyone who didn't fit into the societal norms and values of the time. We see Snagglepuss experience love and success, only to have it threatened simply because of who he knows and who he is. These are just a couple examples of what DC has done with classic Hanna-Barbera characters. I love that Hanna-Barbera is not as protective of its properties as, say, Disney. They allow them to develop and have new dimensions added, even if they're controversial. 
I can see some people being put off by the politics of these comics. They're overt and very left-leaning, so if you're sensitive to that sort of thing, maybe read something else. I feel it's only a matter of time before the right reappropriates a classic cartoon character anyway. My money's on Popeye. If you enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up. May is a very busy month, and we are going to have a bunch of comic-related material coming out with TCAF and Anime North Fest approaching. Uh, be sure to check out some of our other videos, and of course, subscribe. As always, thanks for watching.